this woman next to us is happy to have us here in her state of Texas. She is Dr. Sonia Bartolome from the University of Texas Southwest Medical Center. Thanks for the hospitality having us here. It's been a nice conference, hasn't it? It has. Thanks for coming to Texas. You've been involved in some uh, discussions here uh, centering around PAH. How has the exchange been? The exchange around pulmonary hypertension has been rich at this conference. I think people are really interested in the subject. Um, there's been a lot of new developments over the last year and people are interested to know where the new treatments fit into the current uh, treatment strategy for our patients. Now there's not that much around PAH here at the CHESS conference. Um, do you see people becoming more open and more engaged in PAH? I do. We have a lot of interest from our pulmonary and cardiology fellows in learning this disease and the physiology. It's an up and coming area of research and new developments, which is not the case for a lot of the rest of chest medicine. Very good. Um, many physicians continue to rely on echocardiography as a principal diagnostic tool for PAH. What are the key barriers to more widespread use of right heart catheterization? I really think it's in the conversation around right heart catheterization. When you present a procedure to any patient, they don't want to get it done. No mm -hmm. one does. It involves needles and it involves coming to the hospital. And if given the option, most patients would prefer you not do one of those. But when you explain to the patient the reason you need it, that this test will help me define whether you have pulmonary hypertension or not, but also grade how bad it is, which helps me pick the right treatment for you. I have rarely had a patient not want to have that procedure, so I really think it's all in the conversation. So the need to know overcomes the fear. It really does. Patients need to be given the information to make their own choices, and if given the information, mm -hmm. they nearly always will pick the choice that's best for them. How does a lack of standardization uh, for echo findings challenge you and others to even suggest that PAH may be on the table? Well, it would help if there were standard things on an echocardiogram and I think uh, more conversations need to be had between pulmonologists and cardiologists and rheumatologists about what we're looking for on that echocardiogram. Mm -hmm. The majority of the time when an echocardiogram is ordered people are looking at the left side of the heart, the left ventricle and the ejection fraction and valvular disease which are all much more common amongst patients. And the measurements for those are very standard, but when we're looking for pulmonary hypertension, we're interested in different things. I wanna see what the estimate of the pulmonary pressure is, but really what I'm interested in is the, what the right ventricle looks like, because although our patients have pulmonary hypertension, they're getting sick and dying of right ventricular failure, and so those measurements of right ventricular size and function and, and are really very important for our patients, and I think more communication about how important those things are would help us get the right measurements on echo, which would then force the work up along. Patients with findings of right heart strain frequently have comorbid diagnosis, which represent non-PAH pulmonary hypertension. How can physicians become more comfortable in making recommendations for additional evaluations? You know, that's a really complex topic, and when I talk to other physicians about pulmonary hypertension, what I like to say is there's no reason you can't have a common and an uncommon condition at the same time. So I think it's all about um, degree of disease. So if I have an asthmatic young patient who's being treated for their asthma, they should be able to walk a couple flights of stairs. They should really be able to do everything they need to do. And if that patient is still dyspneic, and yet has relatively well-controlled asthma, I need to look somewhere else. And in fact, in the reveal registry, we found that the most common patients who were underdiagnosed were actually younger people with other comorbid pulmonary conditions. So people weren't looking beyond the common for the uncommon. So what I like to say is, if you have a little asthma or you have a little COPD, but your patient's um, stability is out of proportion to that disease, that's when I look a little further. Very good. Thanks for spending some time with us talking PH. Of course. Thank you. Very good.